Hi, my name is Luke Berg and I work for the Wisconsin Institute for Law and Liberty, a nonprofit law firm based out of Milwaukee, Wisconsin. I'm going to be talking briefly about a lawsuit we recently filed in partnership with Alliance Defending Freedom uh, against the public school district in Madison, Wisconsin, where I live, over some transgender related policies that we believe violate parents' rights. So a couple of years ago, the Madison School District posted on its website a 35 page document with a variety of policies related to transgender issues. Uh, we challenge certain policies buried in there about transitions at school, which are particularly troubling. So there's three parts of it I'm gonna talk about. First, the policy says that students of any age can change their name and pronouns at school without parental permission. Parental consent is required to change name in the official systems. That's actually dictated by federal law. But the district says students can unofficially change their names off the books without parental permission. However, this change is only unofficial in the sense that it's not written down. The policy requires all staff to use the new name and pronouns, and if they don't, they're in violation of the non-discrimination policy and subject to discipline. So from the child's and everyone else's perspective, this is a full official transition. Second, not only can students do this without parental permission, staff are actually prohibited from even notifying parents about this, as you can see in the policy. It says, school staff shall not disclose any information may reveal a student's gender identity to others, including parents. The district emphasized this heavily during all staff trainings they conducted on this policy. The training walked teachers through a hypothetical scenario of a student wanting to transition, and the narration says, it is crucial not to disclose any information about Jaden's gender identity to family without their permission. Third, and worse yet, the policy even requires staff to actively deceive parents by using one name at school and another when parents show up. Now, as you may know, both state and federal law give parents access to all of their children's education records. So you might be wondering, how does the district pull this off without writing anything down? Well, there's a narrow exception in those laws for a teacher's personal notes, which can remain confidential. So the district provides staff with a form to fill out if a student wants to transition. Here's a picture of it. And at the very bottom of that form, it says, please keep this interview in your confidential file, not in student records. This is a pretty blatant attempt to evade those laws. So if you're tempted to think this policy is an outlier, don't. There's this group called GLSEN that's been promoting a model policy for a few years now that includes very similar language about how parental permission should not be required for this. Other groups uh, have published guidance that is not quite as explicit, but also suggests parents don't need to be involved. I haven't done an extensive survey around the country for this, but since filing the case, I've heard from a lot of different people that this is happening everywhere. So pay attention to your local school district. As you can bet, Madison didn't exactly promote this aspect of, the, of its policy. And the policy itself wasn't even voted on by the school board. It was developed internally and posted to the website. As far as I can tell, the district didn't get broad input from parents, but instead from groups like GLSEN. Uh, here's the acknowledgments page at the end of their policy. These policies are obviously troubling on their own, but they're made even worse because the Madison School District is simultaneously teaching school students from kindergarten on that they might be born in the wrong body and that they can choose their gender. Uh, in fact, the policy elsewhere says that the district will strive to disrupt the gender binary, including by correcting misconceptions about gender and language that reinforces the gender binary, like basic pronouns. Uh, so to give a couple examples, a kindergartner in the district was recently sent home with a Black Lives Matter coloring book that includes this page, uh, which says at the bottom, everyone gets to choose if they are a girl or a boy or both or neither or something else, and no one else gets to choose for them. One other example, uh, an elementary school in the district recently played a teacher's gender transition video to the entire school, K through five, without any warning to parents, and the teacher read the book, They Call Me Mix, uh, with a page stating, many people understand that my gender is something for only me to decide. So what makes this so scary to me as a parent is that the district is doing these two things together. It's teaching young, impressionable kids that they can pick their gender, and then if a child believes them and considers transitioning, the district will exclude the parents from the conversation. So we filed a lawsuit to challenge these policies. The legal theory is pretty simple. They violate parents' role as the primary authority over their minor children. Uh, there's a long line of cases from the Supreme Court recognizing that parents' role is constitutionally protected. Here's just one quote 
uh, but you can find 30 other great quotes just like this. The gist of these cases as I read them is that parents are the main decision makers with respect to their minor children and especially on big decisions. So some examples of big decisions traditionally reserved for parents include medical care, legal name changes, uh, and updating official records. That quote from Parham above, I think, is especially apt here. Children are not able to make sound judgments concerning many decisions. Parents can and must make those judgments. Whether to transition is a complex and difficult decision with long-term implications, so parents have to be involved. If you want updates uh, or to see any of your filings, you can check on our website. I've listed the URL here. Uh, or if you're curious about anything else in the case, feel free to email me directly. Thanks, and I uh, hope you enjoy the summit.